Shoot me down, 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 down. I'm bulletproof because of you, because of you. And now I'm bulletproof because of you, because of you. You love me away, now I'm not afraid. No matter what the world may say. Oh, I'm My soul is untouchable because you've already won me. My victory is not in this flesh and bone. It's in the cross, and I know nobody's taking it from me. I got my armor now, no fear, no doubt. Can't shoot me down, yeah. I got my armor now, no fear, no doubt. Gonna shoot me down, 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 down. Hope in life. We're so glad that you're here. I'm Pastor Avery. We're glad that you're here to worship with us today. I first wanted to address our moms. Hey, it is Mother's Day next Sunday. We want to make sure that we can celebrate you in some way. So what we're asking is if you would please send us a picture at HLF Secretary at HopeInLife.tv. If you would do that for us, it should be on the screen. Go ahead and send that in for us so that we can celebrate you on that Sunday. We want to celebrate you. We also want you to worship today. Come on in. Thank you for taking time out to worship wherever you are in your home to lift up God today in this house. And we just want to say thank you for taking time to do that. You are the best. We miss you. We love you. Can't wait to see you again whenever this thing ends. But worship with us today as we glorify God. Hello, Hope and Life family. We are so glad you are online with us, ready to worship the Lord. Come on, gather the family. Stand up in your living room, in your kitchen. Let's declare how much we love our God today. Amen? Come on, let's worship Him. Come on. Woo! Yay! We can't live without your love, Father. It's everything to us. We rise and declare that no one nowhere compares to your love. You are holy. Stand and we shout. We can't live without your love. Cause you are holy, God. Let's go. Great love you have for us, for 
that no one nowhere compares to your love. You are holy, stand and we shall. We can't live without your love. Say, you are holy. Hey, everybody sing. Love you, Jesus. Thank you, Father.
Hey, Hope and Life, I know you enjoyed that worship and praise. Of course, we're just so thankful for Renee and Alan and yeah. all of their team, the, those that are, uh, the, of course, the worshipers, those that are the musicians, but behind the scenes as well. Um, there, of course, with our sound and all the tech group that's working to make all of this happen. It's talent, but then more importantly, it's the anointing of God that's meeting, meeting that, and then, of course, just covering it. So thank God for all of them. I know you've really been ministered to. And Amen. the Bible talks about the power of praise, the power of worship. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord, Psalm 150. And it also says that's the way we enter into his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And so I know you already sense God's presence there in your home. As you've often said, you know, we make your home a, a home of just praise and, and a home for God's presence to be. Amen. And so to God be the glory for it. And, and we, we need to say this and we've been saying it, but man, we really miss you guys. We love yeah. you guys so much. Yes. Uh, this is the eighth Sunday that we've been doing church this way. The eighth week that we're now heading into that we've had to do church this way, and we right. should, uh, but yet it's it's been great to connect, but we really miss you guys. Yeah, we do. I've said it a couple of times now. I cannot wait for the Sunday when we're all able to be back to normal, which yeah. it's going to be a new normal, but when we can just, even if we don't get to hug yet, at least when we can see your faces and just um, be in the same place together to worship together. We, we miss you, church. Um, I don't think I realized how much I was going to miss you guys when this all started, and he feels the same way. Yes. We miss you so much, and we cannot wait till we're able to come together again. And But during this time, there's been some real important Sundays, Easter, um, um, of course, uh, we've Palm had Sunday Palm and, Sunday, but then right there, it was Good Friday. Yeah. And just a lot of important Sundays that during this time, we've been able to connect, but we haven't you know, had a chance to celebrate the way we have traditionally. But man, God has been with us. Yeah. But this coming Sunday is a very important Sunday. It's a Mother's Day Sunday. And even though we're separate, we still want to make sure that we honor our moms. And so Gwen is going to tell you that we're going to, we have a chance to do that. Many of you have already taken advantage of it. So many of you have heard over the last couple of weeks us talking about submitting a picture of your mom or your grandmother uh, to the address that you'll see right there on uh, the screen. We are asking you one last day. This is it, guys. Yeah, this, this is, is the last day because our tech team, like Pastor said, we've got so much going on and they're so busy that we don't want to overload them too much. So we want to make sure they've got plenty of time to make yeah. and prepare what they need to make and prepare for next Sunday to honor our mothers. So again, please make sure if you have not yet submitted a picture of mom or grandma, make sure you get those those pictures submitted so that we can properly just kind of love on her and let her know how much she means to us next Sunday. I had a chance to send some in, of course, of just the important people in my life. Uh, and if I can do it, I know you can do it. And many of you have responded. So make sure that you don't let this day just pass by. Get the pictures in so we can make next Sunday an important day to tell these wonderful ladies how important they are in our life. Mm -hmm. um, also, listen, we have a YouTube channel that we'd love for you to be a part of. Uh, please subscribe to that. It's Hope and Life TV. Just another platform that's stable and strong. Plus, you can also watch on your, if you have a smart TV, watch right there on the big screen. Last week, we were not on our phone. We weren't on our laptop or PC, even though those have been great. We were watching everything take place right there on YouTube and it was right on our big screen. So it just was even that much better and a greater way to connect. So Makes please, you if feel you feel even would, more connected and like you're there, right? That's, that's right. <laughs> just go to YouTube and subscribe there at Hope and Life TV. Also, I, God's put something unique on your heart. Uh, that's a real neat opportunity for us to continue to minister in this time. Our compassion ministry, which is a food ministry, has been continuing to operate. We've been able to help certain families as they've been in a point of need. But here's an area that I think God's put, not a good idea, but a great and a God idea in Pastor Gwen's heart. So many of you know that on the first Saturday of each month, we have an opportunity to minister in the nursing homes. My brother, Pastor Rob, actually heads that up for us along with a team of amazing volunteers. The, the instruments are amazing in Amazing that too. volunteers mm -hmm. that go with him and uh, they play bingo with those residents there at the nursing homes and they bless them and love on them. And during this time, you know as well as I know, we've all been isolated or separated, um, but no one's been more so than our, our elderly people yeah. that are in nursing homes. And it gets my heart... <laughs> And I'll get through this, but it gets my heart because I just, I know how much that those precious people um, just need a little encouragement and just yeah. need some loving and, and loving on. And so here's what I want to ask you to do, church. And you're such a giving church. I know I can count on you for this. Um, I'm going to ask you, if you would, to just write a little encouraging note, a handwritten note, or maybe go 
buy a card. If you're out at the grocery store, don't make a special trip, but if you're out at the grocery store, maybe just pick up a card. Um, and I'm, I'm going to do 10 of these myself. There's about 170 residents at Traditions Nursing Home that we minister to every month. And um, we're wanting to provide each one of those residents with a handwritten card or a handwritten letter from you. Now, we may not know their names and we don't have to put their names on that card. But what I do want us to do is encourage them and just let them know that somebody loves them, somebody cares about them, someone's thinking about them. Their family members aren't able to come in and be there with them and visit with them like they normally would during this time. And that's for good reason. But we have an opportunity to be Jesus' hands and his feet that's right. and to just walk right up in there. Now, not physically walk right up in there, but to deliver a card through their nursing staff to each resident at this nursing home. Um, I want to encourage you maybe to get your kids to participate with you. It will be a great opportunity to teach and talk to them. My dad did that with me growing up my whole life and my brother as well. And that's why it has a special place in our hearts. It's a God idea. So would you please just make sure to write a letter, as she said, buy a card, and of course our cards yeah. and letters, yeah. and just fill all of that out. Send it there to our PO box, and uh, we don't have uh, at this point like a deadline. Right. We're just gathering as many as we can, but it'll be towards the end of the month, right. when, and we'll not be able to go in and give it to them. But as she said, we'll go, and of course we'll give it to the nursing staff, and then they'll be able to provide for everyone that's there. Don't have to put a name on it; it just needs to be encouraging words right. or scripture, and it's really going to make a difference. Going to bless and, uh, them. Obviously, it's something that's on both of our hearts, and so, uh, and I believe. It's something God has given us as an assignment church. Amen. And so Amen. let's just step to the plate and do what we need to Amen. do to be a, a, a part of that. Amen. And I know that that will be something great. Also, hey, um, we have, uh, you know, it's a, not a gift in the traditional sense, but this coming week is going to be a powerful week leading yeah. up to Mother's Day. We're going to have something special every day, right, for our moms. Yeah, we are. We are. So again, we don't have the typical Sunday that we're going to have for Mother's Day. And ladies, you know, we've always tried to honor you every year. Uh, for the past 20 years now, we've honored our our moms with a gift. Maybe it was a flower. Last year it was some succulents that we gave out. Um, we've given out uh, really great Christian books before. We've, we've given out a number of different things. Um, but this year, we don't have that opportunity because we're not meeting together. But instead, we have a, a greater opportunity and a greater uh, gift for you this year, I believe, than any gift you've ever gotten. Because this year, you're going to get five or six days worth of gifts leading up to Mother's Day starting on Monday. Not just one on Mother's Day that you pick up at church and leave with, but every day this week. Um, there's going to be an encouraging word for, from one of our staff wives or, or, or leaders at our church, women in leadership, um, that's going to really speak to your heart and encourage you as a mother. And even if you're not a mom, it's going to be encouraging for you, but they've done it in a real creative and fun way. And so uh, make sure that you view our social media platforms, either Facebook or uh, Instagram. Make sure to take a look at that every day, ladies. There's a gift that's going to be provided uh, for you through the later, leadership of our, our ladies at church. So blessed to be able to give it to you. I believe it's going to be your very best gift you've ever gotten. It'll, it'll be your favorite gift from Hope and Life. I believe it this year. And, and last but not least, we have this real important thing that we need those that are part of Hope and Life. I don't mean just in a viewing audience because social media takes us to the world. And we've right. seen from many different nations around the world, folks that are watching as well as 11 or 12 or so different states uh, that are watching on a regular basis, these uh, um, services that go forth in our mm -hmm. midweeks that, that go forth. But we need those that are part of Hope and Life, meaning if you're a member or you're an active attender at our Grayson campus or the Snellville campus, uh, we need you to go and be a part of what's called a face group. You can go right on Facebook and you can type in Hope and Life Moving Forward and there's a Facebook group that we want you to be a part of. Uh, that's going to help us to talk about not only uh, important things that are just for us as a church family. Right. Uh, we've got some exciting things we'll be talking to you about yeah. here in the very near future yeah. so you don't want to miss it. So you need to be a part of that Facebook group as well as even how we, with the plans of getting back into church, what that's going to look like. And so that's not something we're always going to talk about at this level, but there's some things we're going to talk about on a more private level that's just for our church members right. and people that are regular attenders there at the Grayson Hope and Life Campus or the Snellville Hope and Life Campus. So that is that Facebook group, uh, and it is at Hope and Life Moving Forward. It should be there on the bottom of the screen, but of course that will help you find that. Make sure to find that this afternoon if you would quickly, because we have some things, of course, we want to talk to you about. It's going to be great. And of course, it is time to give. You've been a great giving church. You've not yes. missed a beat during the process yeah. of this. Uh, make sure, listen, you know, text to give, online give. Uh, many of you are adapting to those platforms. Thank you for it. Uh, that's been amazing to see God take care of us. But then also in our, our, those that are regular givers that maybe, you know, you don't have that opportunity 
to put it in the plate, you've been sending it in through the P.O. box. And so please continue to do that. I tell you, it's just continue to allow us to see doors open, yes. to continue to minister to people yeah. and, uh, and continue to make these things happen. God has been so good and so faithful. Yes, you cannot has. give God. You cannot give God Amen. the open-handed life. What God can get to you, He can get through you. So we not only ask you to give as an action uh, to give, but also we speak with our giving. So Amen. let's go ahead and do that. Let's just say our statement of faith that we say with our giving. Upon the authority, authority of your word, word I, have I have given, given and it shall be given to me. me. Pressed down, down shaken together, and running over. I am a tither. I bring my tithe today into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked, the curse is broken, and I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there is not enough room to receive it. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts demolished, and royalties received. My whole family saved and walking with God, perfect health and abundance to walk in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed going in and I'm blessed going out and all that I do will prosper in Jesus name. And everybody said, Amen. And Amen. right there at the bottom of the screen, you can see all the scriptures that we pull that from. So we're declaring God's word and God's word doesn't return void. That's so right. not only give, but as we've made that declaration, we know we tap into heaven. The windows of heaven are open and it's not according to your riches, but according to the riches that God has in glory that he'll provide all of our needs because we serve Amen. a Jehovah Jireh. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for giving. Now. Of course, everything we've talked about is right there in the description or it's somewhere that can be found on the website. So if you didn't get all of that, just follow up and look for it because we want you to be a part. But let's now receive once again from Renee and Alan, their son Nick, as we're going to hear about our God being a way maker. You are our way maker. You are our bridge over troubled water today, God. You're the one that we look to, Father. Nobody else, God. Nobody else but you. You are our strong tower, our way maker, our healer today. Oh, you are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Oh, way maker, miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing it with me. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you, you are Light in the darkness, my God. Hey. 
so powerful I know that it ministered to you it did to me you know when praise goes up walls come down and when we worship God full out from our heart the deep of us crying out into the deep of him you know as the deer panteth for the water so our soul pants for our God I love how David wrote that and uh, penned what should be our heart's desire to go after our God and when we do that we know he draws near to us as we draw near to him casting all of our care on him because God cares for us let me just tell you uh, I know already with the worship and praise in the beginning, but then what we just come out of as well is, is a true opportunity, a time of worship to just really just be saturated in the presence of God and knowing that what happens in that environment is that he renews our mind, he renews our strength, our joy, just all those things that you and I have to have to continue to take the next step forward during this season of what you and I know is uh, the coronavirus, COVID-19, a historic moment when we've been dealing with the pandemic. Now, thank God we're, we're on our way out. We're closer to the end than we are to the middle or even to the beginning of this. And, and you probably can 
tell that because we're here in the sanctuary. It's been a minute since I've had a chance to be right here in the house to, to preach. It's been from my house or from my mother and father's house or my, my brother's house to even uh, my mother-in-law's house where we spent Easter and we uh, had Good Friday. We had other opportunities where uh, we've been bringing the word of God from our homes because that's where we've been. But, but now I want to I wanna bring God's word to you right now, and I'm excited to be back here at Hope and Life. And so if you would, get your Bibles, go and get your journals. Let's get right into what I believe the God, that God wants to speak to us today because I know, as I said a moment ago, coming out of that worship, he inhabits the praise of his people. That environment is ready now really for you to receive what God's word has to speak to us today. So come on, get that out if you would. And... Um, I want you, if, you, if you're able, to go with me to the book of Judges. Judges chapter 4, verse 14. I'm going to read here from the New Living Translation, uh, but also I'm going to probably give you uh, the New King James as well, because I'm normally in the New King James, but man, there's just sometimes other, other uh, different translations just say it in a more powerful way. And so I want to begin reading here in the New Living, but I also want to read it in the New King James. Here's what God's Word says in the book of Judges. Thank you, Alan. The Bible says there in Judges chapter 4, verse 14, then Deborah. Now, that, that's the name of a prophetess that was there in the book of Judges. Judges was, or is, should I say, a book of your Bible where God's people were sinful and they did what they wanted. They were disobedient and they followed their passion and not their passion from God. And it put them in situations where they were under the heel of the enemy. And then God would raise up a judge. Gideon was a judge. Uh, you, when you hear that name. I'm sure that's familiar. Deborah also was a judge during this time that God raised up to be a mighty woman of God that not only prophesied, but also come alongside of a general that she spoke to in the Israeli army, a powerful Israelite general by the name of Barak. And together they, by the power of God, come against the enemy, a Canaanite king and his general, Jabin. They came against Jabin and his general, which was Sisera. Jabin was the king of the territory there of Canaan, and Sisera was his general. And they heavily outnumbered God's people and really in the natural should have devastated them. But yet, you know, with God, we're more than conquerors. And we're going to see how the scripture bears that out. So the word says here, once again, there in Judges chapter 4, verse 14, then Deborah said to Barak, I already told you, that's the general that she speaks to. That represents Israel. And the word says there in the living translation, let me speak this to you. It says, get ready. This is the day the Lord will give you victory for the Lord is marching ahead of you. Now, I want you to hear that today. I know they're going to have that scripture there on the screen. I'll have some points that will follow in a moment. But hear what God's word says to you. It's the word of the Lord that sets you free, that frees your mind, that changes your stinking thinking from revelationary thinking thinking that is built literally on the power of his word and not on your emotions or your feelings. The word says, get ready. This is the day the Lord will give you victory for the Lord, hear this, is marching ahead of you. The New King James Version says it this way. I like it. It just starts it off and says, up. I mean, up, explanation point. For this is the day which the Lord has delivered Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone out before you? The word is telling us here that God is providing a supernatural victory where there was obviously numbers that outnumbered God's people. You and I are always going to find ourselves at a moment in time where we're outnumbered. I often will see where God's people are not only outnumbered, but heavily outnumbered, but yet God provides victory every time because we serve a God that is a God of victory, a God of power, and a God that has our best interest at his heart. See, in times of uncertainty, let me give you my point this morning, and, and what my title was last week as I was with my brother, and you can see I've already been kind of cleaned up and prepared because last week I was there in his barber's chair, and we took time to talk about trusting God, and the great example was how I sat in his barber chair, and I trusted my beard and, of course, uh, my flowing mane uh, to him, and he did a good job, a great job. Gwynny was very excited about seeing me cleaned up, tightened up. But ultimately, we talked about how you can trust God. And I'm going to give a couple of points from last week um, and then also some new ones this week with this title that God is to be trusted. Hear that. God is to be trusted. That's our title today. Life will leave you busted. But listen, God is to be trusted. And number one, kind of building off of this scripture is that in times of uncertainty, just that, God's to be trusted. But not only that, I want to add to it today and say not only is God to be trusted, but also the word of God is to be trusted. 
Deborah was declaring God's word to the general, Barak, to say, look, I know we're outnumbered. I know that we're up against an adversary that is greater and stronger than us in the natural. Even like David, small compared to the mighty giant. But with God, we are more than conquerors in and through Christ Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen out there? I know you can. I've been watching over the last couple of weeks as you can type those things in. You can indicate your praise right from your living room. Your agreement with what's being said or sung from this platform or from my mother-in-law's backyard so many weeks ago and on Easter to right there in my living room when we declare something that I know ministers to you right where you are. You can say amen or, or preach it, pastor, or that's good. And I want you to say it today. Listen, that when things are uncertain, I want you to declare this. God's word is to be trusted. Just put that in there and say, I trust in God's word or I'm trusting in God. Now, we are obviously in uncertain times. We are, without a doubt, I don't have to tell you something that you don't already know. You're living it. You've been living it. I've been living it. Uncertain, unsure moments and days that have felt similar to the day prior. It just seems as if it has all just bled together and we don't know when it began, to, and be, began excuse me, and we're not sure when it's going to end. But ultimately, in the midst of that, you and I have to know that in uncertain times, God's word is to be trusted and God is to be trusted. See, we're living... Now, more aware than we've ever been that our world is limited, meaning it is frail and it can be shaken. And not only if our world is being shaken, is it frail and limited, but that lets you and I, as we're on this planet, that we're very limited and that we're very frail in our own ability. But where the world is limited and it's been revealed, what, three or four months ago, what this time last year we never would have thought would have ever been shaking under our feet, which is now... We never would have thought it. If, you had, if I'd have told you a full year ago, you're not going to believe it. But in April, or, or in April and or February and March and April and May, that all of these months would be affected and we'd be in our homes and, and disconnected and doing something that we probably would have never heard the term before, socially distancing, you'd have thought I'd, I'd, I'd lost my mind. But now you know how limited and, and weak and frail we are to, to things, how vulnerable we, vulnerable, excuse me, vulnerable we are to things that, that are beyond our strength. But even though our world is limited, listen, I want to declare to you today that we serve a limitless, hear this, a limitless God. So in times of uncertainty, God's word's to be trusted and God is to be trusted. Uncertainty says, I don't know what the future holds, but knowing that we serve a limitless God, you can declare with me right now that God holds our future and our tomorrow. Just come on, amen, that God holds your future and your tomorrow. Don't leave it up to chance. Don't, don't feel as if somehow circumstances control your situation or your world. The devil is a liar today. God holds your future, and God has a plan and a purpose for your life. The Bible says, in Proverbs that it said we shouldn't boast about tomorrow because we don't know what tomorrow brings. That's right, we don't, but we know who holds our tomorrow. We know who controls our future. We know who already, the Bible says, has already written out a plan for you and I, and it is the great author, the great creator, it is our God, Jehovah, that has placed you and I on the planet right now in this uncertain moment, but yet, come on, be bold and declare that even when things are uncertain, when things are very limited, when we're aware of our weakness, we don't trust in ourselves, but we put our trust. God's word is to be trusted. God is to be trusted. See, when you say that, what you're saying is, is that you're wanting to live with a heart of faith, a life that is faith-filled. The word says in Hebrews chapter 11 that without faith it is impossible to please God. But with faith, believing that he is God and a rewarder of them that diligently seek him will please God. In these uncertain times, declaring that God's word is to be trusted, that God is trusted. Listen, can I tell you, that pleases your God today and God will make a way for you where there isn't a way that seems even available. But God will do it for you, those that have faith and trust in him. See, we're not denying, and I'm not asking you today and talking about this sermon now in the second week, a God to be trusted, to deny the facts. The facts are that our economic future is shaky at best. The, the facts are is that we're, we're not out of this yet, and they're already telling us that maybe this time next year or somewhere in the fall or in, in the winter months that this might come back and affect us in a greater way. I, I don't know. I'm not trying to deny that, nor am I trying in any way to encourage that. 
Ultimately, my eyes will not be on that. My eyes and yours as well should be on our God because God, I'll say it again, in uncertain times, his word is to be trusted and God is to be trusted. Let everything else be shaken, but what God says should remain will always remain. And you and I as God's people, as Ephesians 6 would say, when the battle is raging, God will allow you and I to remain standing. And I want you to feel that strength today. God will allow you to stand in uncertain times. But God doesn't require you and I as Christians to deny the facts. He doesn't say to somehow stick our head in the spiritual sand and deny what we're facing or somehow say it over and over and over that it is not here, it is not here, it is not here. You can say that all day long, but coronavirus is here. You can say it all day long, but yet you're still going to have to social distance and head out into your world with potential gloves and a mask on and realize that what is unseen can affect you. But more than that, what I know is not denying the facts, but believing that God is with you. That is the very definition of faith, that God with us in the midst of our good times as well as our bad is faith. I believe God. God is for us. And if God is for us, then who can be against us? See, the facts will tell us what our world looks like. And without God in the middle of it, it's going to be nothing more than fear for you and I. But as I'll give it to you once again, that first point that when times are uncertain, and that's the fact, but yet also faith says we can trust in God's word and God is a God to be trusted. See, to be without Christ will leave you without peace. In the very definition of trust today and speaking about a God to be trusted, trust is this, a firm belief in the reliability of someone. And that someone is not your next door neighbor. It's not your best buddy. It's not someone that you think you can count on because people will fail you, but God will never fail you. A number of years ago, I had a sermon series and we even had a wristband here that said hashtag trust in all the way. You know what? It is now time for you and I to wake up every day and just that hashtag trusting all the way in God. Since God is for us, Romans 8 and 31, then who can be against us? Point number two, never be afraid to commit an unknown future to a known God. Our future is unknown. To us, it is yet to be revealed. But to God, God has already written the conclusion for you and I. And it is that we win. How can you say that? Because we already have won through Christ. This life that we're living is not the final destination. It's just the stopover to ultimately eternity with God. But never be afraid in uncertain times to trust in God's word, also trust in God, but also never be afraid to commit an unknown future to a God that you know. And God's word and what you should have already experienced are some things about God that he's proven. Number one, that God loves you, John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his son. Number two, God is good. And you know, many of you here in this church know what we're going to say. If God is good, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. If it is good, it is God. If it is not good, it is not God. Let me tell you today, God is good. Even in the midst of this situation, I hear of people that are coming back to the Lord like they never have before. I hear of folks seeing God do things for them that they could not do for themselves. God providing for them. Miraculous things taking place right now in the middle of the most uncertain times. But as I said it a moment ago, God loves you, so commit to, to God. Maybe it might be an unknown future to you, but, but to know your God is to know he loves you. And secondly, that he's good. And then thirdly, that he has a plan for you. I heard the story just the other day of a friend of mine. I was speaking to him, and he was talking about how, as a pastor, they were right there early in March knowing that the next week, this was going to be their last week of service, and the next week... They weren't sure how they were going to even make things happen. They didn't have an an online presence. They didn't have the cameras and the equipment nor the people. And it really felt like it was the last service for a good while and did not know how the finances were going to somehow meet up and how he was going to be able to continue to minister to his people. He stood there at the end of the service there at the altar praying for folks. And one of the new members or new folks that had been coming and only had been there about six months, a young family showed up and they walked up and the father, the, the husband there said, hey, how are you going to continue to minister next week. Are we going to be online? And he said, deep down in my heart, he said, I had great anguish. I was very concerned. He said, well, I'm not, but he spoke and said, well, I'm not really sure how God's going to help us. And that man who had only been in that church for around six months, pastor didn't know him really, really well, just that they had been connecting. He said, well, you don't know, but I work here locally for one of the universities and I'm a part of their IT team and I have a lot of personal equipment. And he said, you know what? I I feel like I need to help you over the next so many weeks, make sure that what's happening here is taken out so they can not only minister to the people that are part of our church, but to also others that will partake from it. Do you know what? They never missed a beat. 
They had church that Sunday and they have had church. Now, it might have been from his living room the last couple of weeks, but they have had church every following Sunday and people have been ministered to as well as they have reached further than they ever thought they would. Why? Because an unknown future is to be trusted with a known God. God loves us. God is good. And God has a plan for us. I feel it out there, right there. Amen. Come on, somebody hit me with some amen, some thumbs up, some hearts, whatever you want to do. Just dance right there in your living room because you know what? The future is yet to be determined, but God's already been there. God already knows it and God is to be trusted. How do I know that? Because the past tells me God was good. My now tells me God is good. So why should I not believe that God's going to be good in your and my future? Amen. I'll give a stomp on a Sunday morning. I know normally y'all would see me do that. And you know what? It'd be, but I I feel like I've got to do that because I've got to express today the joy that I have in my heart to know how good and faithful that our God is. See, life will leave you. If we put our trust in what we see and what we know, life will leave you busted, empty, poured out, not enough. Life will leave you busted, but your God, hear it, is to be trusted in uncertain times. The future is unknown, but God is known. I love how my father's always said that an experience is never at the mercy of an argument. You know God. God's been faithful. You've experienced God. Don't let something else argue you from what you know and you've experienced with God. Judges chapter 4 and verse 14. Hear it again. Hear what it says. It says, up or get ready. The Lord will give you victory. The Lord is marching ahead of you. See, oh man, I got to seal this into your spirit. This has ministered to me. Listen, we serve a God. How does he bring you and I victory? God marches out in front of us. Today, you have a God that is marching out in front of you and he is providing victory. You might not see it yet, but hold on because you're going to see it. You might not have it yet in your hand, but sooner or later, you're going to see the victory right there. What you thought could never happen, God's going to make happen because we serve a God who marches out before us into battle. Third point, God is our point man. You know, a couple, just last Sunday, a couple of days ago, last Sunday when I was having my, my, my hair cut and my beard trimmed, and now I went ahead and shaved it all off today, but there at my brother's house, we were talking about trust, and one of the points we talked about was that Jesus is our point, man. In uncertain times, God is to be trusted. His word is to be trusted. When the future is unknown, trust that unknown future to a known God. God is good. God is a plan. And the main thing, God loves us. But then also he's our point man. That that term is a military term in its truest form. And a military term meaning this, that when there was a a, a military operation taking place, that they'll always put someone out in front. The point man. The point man is out in front and he's the person that's to be exposed initially to the threat and the danger to, to investigate and to flush out the enemy. Do you know what Jesus has and always will be? Your and my point man. Jesus is the point man because he is the one that has our back. He's the one that took the cross, took the pain, and paid the ransom so that you and I could have life, life, life and life more abundantly today. He is our point man, the one who was exposed to the threat and the danger and took all of our sin. Now, here's the danger that was found in this passage that Deborah speaks to Barak that General, Barak the general, says up in the New King James or the Living Translation, get ready. Victory is ours. God's providing victory. He's marching out in front of us. But you know, the very next, very verse, right prior to verse 14, says this Judges chapter 4, verse 13. So Sisera, as I said, Sisera was the key general that worked under the Canaanite king there by the name of Jabin. And it says, so Sisera gathered together all his chariots. And the Bible just goes ahead and gives us a little detail. 900 chariots, in fact, of iron. And all the people, that's the infantry and the army that was with them, and all the people who were with them from, it goes on to speak of the river of Kishon. 900 chariots as well as infantrymen. And that's the very verse that backs right up to verse 14 that I've been declaring into your ear, hopefully down into your heart today to build boldness into you. Get up, get ready. God's bringing victory. We serve a God that provides victory this way. He marches out before you and I into battle, but they're going to face a real adversary that has 900 chariots as well as infantry. When you think of chariots in that day, it was as technologically advanced and lethal as 
the modern tank of the day, the, the fighter jet that flies and can deliver a missile right on target, or that aircraft carrier that has 5,000 men, as well as I don't know how many jets that can be deployed to all, be deployed to all points on the planet. And the chariots were equal to that, and they didn't have one, they had 900. They could have stayed in the hills. That's the way that God's people actually fought during the day if they were facing chariots. They'd stay in the hill country because the chariots couldn't go there. But to meet them on a flat plain, a battlefield, a traditional battlefield of the day, <coughs> then they would be mowed over, ran over by the enemy. But here God is marching out in front of them. They believe. They stand with him. He is what? Their point man. And they meet the enemy on the battle plain. And God routes the enemy because, as we said just a moment ago, get up, get ready. The Lord will give you victory. The Lord is marching out ahead of you. Come on, can I get an amen? And let me just ask you, just as a question right now. You can give me a thumbs up or an amen or what, or, but has God ever provided for you in your past? Has God ever fought for you in your past? Has God ever made a way for you in your past? I'm asking, do you have a testimony today? Can you testify to God doing something in your past? Man, if he did it then, he can do it now and he can do it in your future. So hold on because in uncertain times, God's word and God is to be trusted. When the future is unknown, you can trust in your known God that loves you, that is good and has a plan for you. And he has sent his son Jesus to be your and my point man, to be exposed to the danger and the threat, to take all the sin on the cross so that you and I can now live the abundant life in and through our Christ Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bible tells us, though, they had this enemy that had all of these chariots. But you know what the psalmist said? Boy, one of the most powerful scriptures. I love it. It's found in Psalm 20 and verse 7. It says, Some trust in chariots, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, some trust in the natural. But the psalmist said, But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Today is God an afterthought. Has he just been a convenience that was when you needed him, then you would draw on God. But when you seem to have control and things working for you that you didn't really look for God in your life and it wasn't something that you even put a thought to. Do you only turn to God in desperation? Aren't you glad that God does answer the desperate prayer? But God wants more than just some kind of fling and an affair with you. He wants a relationship. He wants something that's built on character and integrity that's long lasting, not just some desperate cry, even though God does minister to the desperate cry today. So don't hold back. Those that cry unto the Lord, those that shout unto God, he'll respond. But don't you want to have a relationship with Heavenly Father? Don't you want to have that ongoing relationship with your God, a covenant relationship? Well, why do we wait to when everything seems to fall apart? And maybe the very thing we've been walking through for so long now reminds us is how what we thought we could stand and be foundational is nothing more than sinking sand. Only God can keep us. Maybe if things have fallen apart, turn to God. If they haven't, things seem to be being held together by duct tape in your life. Listen, it's only a matter of time. And those who seem as if it'll never fall apart, look, you're putting your hope in something that will never, ever be as solid as your God. Don't wait till it's too late. Don't wait until somehow it feels as if it all is wasting away. It doesn't have to. Hear this today. It doesn't have to be that way. Alan, come on. Would you come to the piano for me and... Uh, Give me that, as I say here, that landing the plane music. Psalm 128, verse 1 through 2 says this, Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to him, who will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. That's Psalm 128, verse 1 through 2. What did that first part say here? Blessings are all who, blessed, it should I say, are all. All who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to Him. When you're walking in obedience, it's your knowing God's word is to be trusted. God is to be trusted, that God is known to you. He's proven Himself to you, that He is proven to be your point man. Let me give you a couple, a couple more points just, just quickly as I finish today. To really walk into obedience, it's got to be this. Point number four, it's got to be what? God's plan plus God's ways then will equal God's results. What you want are God's results. Yours might win for the day, but they'll not last forever. It'll be fleeting. The Bible tells us more than once, folks that made plans without God, then that very night, their soul was required from them. They say, we're gonna build barns, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do all these great things. 
And then the very next day, it all fell out from under them because unless the Lord builds the houses, the psalmist said in Psalm 127, those who stay awake, are staying awake for nothing. Those who try to protect are never going to be able to fully protect unless the Lord builds, builds the house. Those who labor, labor in vain. God's plans plus God's ways equal God's results. I know you want God's results, don't you? Just say it. Say, I want God's results. Where? In your life, in your family, in your home, in your work. How are you going to get God's ways and God's plans to operate and get God's results is when you hear God's voice, listen to it, respond to it. When you hear it preached through a sermon, sung through a song, you hear God challenging you, hear it, respond to it. Seek God's direction first so that you won't have to ask forgiveness later and change your thinking. Renew your mind, as the Bible says, so that you can be more like God. Psalm 24, verse 3 through 4 says, Who may ascend to the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy place? He who has, hear this, it's so important for our time today, right? He who has clean hands. <laughs> it's kind of funny, right? But really it comes down to speaking to a level of purity. Who can stand in the holy place? Who can be in God's presence? He who has clean hands, and hear this, and a pure heart. He who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. deceitfully. It's time, church. As we're talking about, we serve a God to be trusted. It's time for us to keep it clean and honest and humble and accountable with integrity that reveals that we have an authentic relationship with God. There's been a whole lot of fakes and a whole lot of phonies, and now's the day for those who love God will worship God in spirit and in truth. Last point today, God is to be trusted, so let's just declare it. In God we trust. I mean, it's all over our money, right? It's something, of course, that we can say as a nation at times, and we can kind of throw that phrase out, but man, this is the day where God's just saying, do you trust me or not? In God, we trust. Boy, I feel that. In God, we trust. Whew. Say that, just type it boldly. In God, we trust. How is it that we can trust in God? I've given you a lot of reasons, but think of in Judges chapter 16, verse 22. It's another judge that was raised up, but man, this judge was flawed, man. His name is Samson. He could have been the biggest and the baddest of them all, but too often he was too big in his own mind and more bad than he was good. But the Bible says towards the end of his life where that his anointing that was provided over him was, was tied off to a, a, a ability where he just he didn't do certain things. He should have been more integral in his walk and ultimately it, it was linked to him not cutting his hair. It wasn't power in the hair, it was power in the covenant and the de dedication to God. But yet he was compromised. He allowed Delilah to reach into his heart. And because of that, he laid his head literally in the lap of the enemy and he paid for it. But why is it that in God we trust? To trust God? Because why? Because this, by the Bible says, Judges 16 and 22, the hair of his head, Samson's head, hear this, began to grow again. See, God gives back. If you know at the end, he was anointed again to defeat his enemy that he had been prepared to defeat. God gives back. That hair began to grow again. Not only will God give back, but God will not give up on you and I, and he has it today. Only God also knows the potential and direction of your life. So what do we do here as we're kind of finishing up and I, we still have some time to go, but as we come out of this season, this amazing, historic, overwhelming, frustrating, fear-filled season, what do we do with this? Just let it be some distant memory, then go back to our regular world? No, you know it can't happen that way. Chuck Swindoll was quoted one time as saying this, that life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it. How are we going to respond to what we've been through? How are you gonna respond? Are you gonna come out of this saying, God, we trust in you? Or are you gonna go back to the regular, fall back into your familiar patterns, slip back into the malaise of being religious but not be relational, compromise those things you know that God loves and that God expects of us, and just live your life for yourself? Mm -mm. In the name of Jesus, come on, you can say with me, God is to be trusted. We as believers choose to have faith among the fear. We as believers choose to have positivity amongst, amongst the negative thoughts that surround us. We as believers, even with fear, look, in our mind, 
Having faith doesn't mean that the fear is not there. It just means that even in the midst of fearful moments, we trust God. Even with fear in our minds, we know the Lord will provide for us. Amen. Only one thing that can give you true peace today is being in right relationship with God. And I've talked about it the last couple of, couple of Sundays, of course, and been challenging you as we've been online, and I'll say it once again. When I met Christ and I had him, I gave him my life. It was the Sunday after the most awful Saturday I've ever had in my life where I was the very thing I hated the most. My brother had been killed by a drunk driver, and I found myself on that Saturday night six months after my brother had been killed in a car accident where he wasn't uh, at fault, just coming home, and a young man driving down the other side of the road, inebriated and drunk, crossed the line and hit my brother's car head on. But six months after that, I was in a car driving drunk. That's been 30 plus years ago, but the devil will make you what you hate. God will make you what you're meant to be. He'll give you purpose. Well, that night I hit a mailbox. Thank God. I thank God. I'm embarrassed to even share of this, but I hit a mailbox under the influence of alcohol and was able to get home. And the next day, I knew I had to be at church, but my dad came in that night and said, you're going to church. And we did, and the songs were sung, and the preach was preached, just like it's happened today. And I dedicated my life to Christ. I didn't make the decision. God had already prepared my heart meaning I didn't make up my mind. God had already made the way. I just received what God had prepared for me. I'm asking you today just to receive it. If you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, just say it with me. Repeat it in, from your heart and out of your mouth. The Bible says that we've all fallen short of the glory of God, Romans chapter 3. But yet while we were in sin, Romans chapter 5, God demonstrated his love for us by sending his son to die on the cross. Romans 10 says then if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth, then we're saved. So just say this with me. Lord Jesus, I love you today. I give you my life. Change my life. I believe, God, that you are to be trusted, and I trust in Jesus, your son. I receive him as authority in my life. I'm no longer my own. I'm now yours. Come on, say it. I'm now yours, Jesus. And then just say it. Say, amen. If you meant that, just as my life changed, 30-something years ago, and it's never been the same. I'm more in love with Jesus than I've ever been. Your life has also truly changed. And just watch and see what God will accomplish. But now, Father, I also pray for your people. Lord, we're coming out of this heavy situation, but Father, I believe we're coming out more with more of you and less of us. I thank you, God. You've proven yourself to be trusted. Father, I declare it even as our last point said it, in you we trust, because God, you are a God that marches out in front of us to provide victory. Church, we love you and appreciate you. Of course, there's many ways to connect with us. Make sure that you do that. But may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. He be gracious to you. He lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. And may you be covered by the name that's greater than any other name. That's the name of Jesus. And remember that Jesus always provides hope for today and life for you tomorrow. God bless. Grace and peace, family. Wasn't that word good? Right on time. Just what you needed, huh? Hey, listen, as you unpack and process everything God just spoke to you, we want to open up the altar. No matter where you are, no matter who you are, if you know that God is calling you into a deeper relationship with him, I pray that's your prayer. Don't let this service end without getting right with God. If you believe in your heart that Jesus was born of a virgin, was crucified, dead and buried, and rose three days later, it brings me and this church family pure joy to tell you you're saved. Right now, reach out to us. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. We want to walk with you. The information is on the screen. We need to stay connected now more than ever. We love you. We're praying for you. Can't wait to see you.
got this whole thing under control My soul is untouchable Because you've already won me My victory is not in this flesh and bone It's in the cross and I know Nobody's taking it from me I got my armor now No fear, no doubt Can't shoot me down, yeah I got my armor now No fear, no doubt Gonna shoot me down, down, down